Hello again to this video clip series. My journey to God in a very secularized world. Uh, I, had, uh, I had added to the second meditation of Don't Have to Go Away when I published it on the internet. I had added a few other thoughts. And that's what we're going through right now, which you can find in the article with the title The Woman Clothed with the Sun in Search of the Little Ones. So I continue here in some of the things I added. I put, if someone did a great service for us, but we did not witness this great sacrifice, how many of us do not appreciate very much this great act of love for us? Behold, the wisdom of the saint who tells us to meditate every day on the passion of Christ. When each father, priest, or bishop dies, God will ask each of them if they did everything they could to lead not only themselves, but every soul entrusted to them to, to heaven, as I said before. I might start off with a very recent experience of the annual spiritual exercises of my Diocese of Perugia in, in, yeah, in, in January from 18th to 22, 2016. At this retreat, there was one cardinal present, three bishops, and over 50 priests from the Diocese of Perugia and of the uh, Città di Castello. The priests who offered us the meditations two or three times a day for four days was Padre Amadeo Cencini, who is much sought after here in Italy in the formation of priests. Just about everyone was in admiration of his intelligence and capacity to speak well. The theme of the spiritual exercises was the pardoned thief on the cross, from penitent priest to priest confessor. Without going into detail or any critical analysis, I only want to indicate a couple of very fundamental lackings which occurred to me that no other priest seemed to realize. One was the fact that in the four days of recollation, rec meditations, Padre Amadeo did not mention even once the need or at least the great help that can be obtained if one has a childlike and trusting relationship with Mary, the Mother of God. I do not recall hearing Mary mentioned even once in the meditations. Another observation of mine was that in the evening, from... Uh, from uh, uh, 19 to 1940, before Vespers, there was adoration of the cross without the corpse of Christ on the cross, as is common in the Protestant churches, with the cross placed in front of the altar with the spotlight on it, and the tabernacle behind in darkness. During these four days, there was never a moment of Eucharistic adoration even as a group, outside of the normal daily Mass. After having made a daily holy hour before the tabernacle in church for more than 15 years, I was very surprised that they left the tabernacle in the dark where there is the body, the blood, the soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ in person. For me also, there was lacking the explanation and help and encouragement to develop a greater personal relationship with Christ by way of meditating often on the Passion of Christ. At one point, Padre Amadeo said that the main suffering of Christ was due to the possible loss of salvation of the thief. No other words or explanation was given in the meditation about the nature of the sufferings of Christ on the cross. It seems to me that the saints tell us that the main suffering of Christ is understood in the fact that Christ loves immensely and thus suffers, suffers immensely due to the lack of response of our love, just as any one of us would suffer if someone we love very much does not reciprocate our love. Christ loves infinitely more than any of us are capable and thus suffers more than we can possibly imagine due to our great indifference. In the meditations, there was no indication or reference or explanation of what the saints tried to tell us 
about the need to console and make reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Without this compassion of true heartfelt love of the one who suffers immensely on the cross for each of us due to our objective sins, which is what truly does us harm, not just sins based on a psychological or a sentimental or a feeling for sin. What kind of relation do we have with Jesus Christ? During the retreat, there was no mention or explanation of sin according to divine revelation explained by the church, but more of a psychological explanation presented in an intelligent and elegant way. The servant of God, <coughs> Archbishop Fulton Sheen was also a very good psychologist, but always maintained the proper priorities of the fundamentals of our faith first and foremost. Seventy years ago, Fulton Sheen was on all the television stations in America. He wrote over a hundred books and gave hundreds of retreats for priests and bishops, encouraged them, encouraging them to do as he did every day, a holy hour before the Blessed Sacrament in church every day. It, it is well it is well known how Fulton Sheen explained very well, according to the teacher of the Majesty of the Church, the importance of the Mother of God in God's design for our salvation. Archbishop Fulton Sheen was very capable of explaining the true fundamentals of our faith in a clear and yet simple way, so that just about everyone could understand these saving truths in a very applicable way while making the proper distinctions so as to not slide into false truth, false love, false mercy, or misguided compassion, or even the Catholic Church based on psycho psychology instead of the teachings of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, explained by his church, the Catholic Church. It is rather interesting that Pope Francis has stopped the beatification process of, of Archbishop Fulton Sheen. <coughs> This was in 2016 that I wrote this. But in the end, my basic thought was how can I imitate the pardoned thief? From penitent priest to priest confessor, without frequent time in meditation on the Passion of Christ and spending much time with Jesus in the Eucharist beyond just the Mass and with the help of Mary at the foot of the cross, as all the saints have shown, shown to us by the their example in lives. I did not come away from this retreat more in love for Jesus and Mary, nor did I feel more encouraged to keep more and more my gaze on Jesus and Mary and all the saints, as all the saints encourage us by their example and their writings. Without this fundamental guidance and encouragement of the retreat master, how easy it is for us priests to end up in doing what most Catholics do today in regard to confession. The secretary of the Congregation of Clergy, Archbishop Maura Piacenza, has lamented that many faithful no longer confess their sins. Archbishop Piacenza told Vatican Radio in June 5, 2009, the sacrament of penance has been experiencing a deep crisis for decades. Piacenza, an official for the Vatican Office of, on Clergy, says fewer people distinguish between good and evil, and as a result, do not go to confession. The Archbishop said in an interview that if faithful do not have a sense of sin, they might confuse confession with the couch of a psychologist or a psychiatrist. He says the Vatican plans to publish this year, 2009, a Vatican for confessors and spiritual directors. You, you might also read an article regarding that, an open letter to a fellow priest. You might be in, uh, very enlightened by the, the Blue Book, The Messages of Gobi, the title, To the Priests, Our Ladies, Beloved Sons. Almost 20 cardinals and, um, and more than 150 bishops, more than 50,000 priests and religious, have followed the married movement of priests, for, receiving by way of the book, which contains the messages, precious teachings from the Mother of God, in this devastating attack of the ecclesiastical masonry on the sound doctrine of the Church and the sacraments, especially the Most Holy Eucharist. 
Many bishops have given their imprimatur to this book. You will find in these messages of Our Lady revealed through Don Gobi a resemblance to the writings of St. Louis de Montfort, St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, and to the message of Our Lady of Fatima, with the sweetness that only the Mother of God and the Mother of each of us could communicate to those open to the caresses of Our Lady. The Polish Pope had indicated to Don Stefano Gobi the way to contact him directly by way of his secretary, Monsignor Stanislaw Dijonitz, in, in his name. One day, Pope John Paul II said to Don Stefano Gobi, pointing his finger to him, You are pastor of the whole world. That was July 1, 2011. Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus on, on July 1, 2001, Solemnity of Sacred Heart, Cardinal Ivan Diaz, being with the Holy Father, informed him of the death of Don Stefano and of the Holy Mass celebrated the day before in Cola Valenza. Pope Benedict XVI, after a brief pause of silence, pronounced these words. He went straight to heaven. And you can find this in the book of, uh, uh, printed by the Pauline sister, Pauline Sisters, Pastor of the Whole World, Biography of Don Stefano Gobi, or, or in Italian, I don't know if it's in English, but in Italian, Parco di tutto il mondo, Biografia di Don Stefano Gobi, di Maridelle Tabesi, Edizione San Paolo, 2015, page 181 and 200. May God bless you and Mary guide you.